What would you do if you woke up in the middle of the night, only to find something watching you from the darkness? These chilling camping encounters caught on camera might make you think twice before your next trip into the wild. On December 20th, 2021, on the Appalachian Trail, Virginia, it was the day before Thanksgiving when Phil, a professional hiker, decided to hike and camp overnight on the Appalachian Trail near his home in Virginia. The crisp air and quiet woods seemed perfect for an escape from his busy life. But from the very start of this trail, strange things began to happen. So the hike's been awesome so far. I mean, I've only been out for about half hour. River behind me, really pretty day. Um, as I was walking up, I saw some trash in the trail and I came across this. So some Bud Light cans, plastic bat. Some writing on some of this garbage. Hangman is coming down from the gallows. Uh, song lyrics. Other weird things. Well, hopefully I don't get murdered out here. That would totally ruin my day. Well, let's keep going. While walking the trail, he spotted trash scattered across the ground beer cans, scraps of paper, and odd scribbles. One piece had the words, Hangman is coming down from the gallows. It felt wrong, like someone wanted to send a warning. But it was not the only note that was left for him here. The weirdness continues. We just get the hell out of here. I'm not getting near that. I'm not getting near that. Do we gotta get the hell out of here? No. Okay, well that was really weird. So um, as I was hiking toward the shelter, still considering what I was gonna do for the night, uh, these two women were hiking in the opposite direction. They had a little dog with them. They asked if I had seen the guy who was leaving the notes. I said he has a campsite down by the river because I could hear the fire going. I could see where his tarp was set up. He was actually just sitting on a rock down there. They were shocked I was still considering camping out there, but I decided that um, I didn't really feel like it. And plus they said that they were kind of freaked out and asked if I would go with them and walk past his campsite um, so they could get back to their car. So I did. Um, and then when I got back to my truck, I went over to the other side of the road, drove up uh, like a forest service road. And I'm actually on the Appalachian Trail, just going the opposite direction. So instead of going s north, no, instead of going south, now I'm going north, but I'm just gonna find the closest camp spot to where I'm at because the sun is going down and set up camp and yeah, settle in. Later, two hikers appeared on the trail, shaken and warning him about the man by the river. They seemed scared enough to ask him to escort them back to their car. After helping them, he chose to camp elsewhere, driving to a new trailhead and setting up camp far from the river. I'm gonna check out the shelter log here. I hang out by the fire. Almost every shelter on the Appalachian Trail has a shelter log. 
where people write in their trail names and what's going on. They can write whatever they want in there. So it's kind of cool tradition here. So let's see what this one says. Little engine, back section. Hiking again, finally. Great day on the AT. This was in August. Huh. Someone left some PBRs here, I guess. It's nice and a little trail magic. Ah, some comics and writing and stuff. All right, let's see what's happened recently. Holy crap. Wait a second. Well, let me adjust the camera here. This writing looks almost exactly like the writing that was on that garbage a couple of miles from here. Um, let's see if this makes any sense. Sorry if the lighting's bad. I'm just gonna see what it says. Clean the outhouse. Picked up trash. Collected wood for others. See Charlie Daniels' Simple Man lyrics, which I used in 2013 Facebook post, and note the rope I found with the silicone sealant can two miles south of that I left it on a stump. In 2018, while I was incarcerated at the Okaloosa County Jail, what the heck? In solitary confinement, I figured the following out. Refer to Isaiah 28, 15 through 9. As he settled in for the night at a different shelter, the unease didn't leave. While flipping through a trail logbook, he noticed the same strange handwriting as before. The writings rambled about Bible verses, politics, and weird messages. A shiver ran down his spine. The man had been there, too. Okay. Emergency press conference. So, I thought it would be a fun little thing to look at the Johns Hollow Shelter log. That's where I'm staying, Johns Hollow Shelter. And um, just check out trail names and what people's experiences were on the trail. Um, and it was. It was fun at first. Um, but man, once I came across that guy's writing, it was so weird. It was like, I felt like I was, I don't know, the plot continues or something. You open it up and it's like, that writing looks familiar. Oh my gosh, the same writing as that guy that's three miles away that I hiked this far away to get away from the dude. And now, um, yeah, man, I guess he was just here a few days ago. Uh, ranting, it's like music lyrics and political stuff and, um, you know, talking about people leaving trash and just weird rants and Bible quotes and it's just like all over the place. Kind of sketchy, kind of weird. Um, it's just really weird to have that feeling of like relaxation, like I'm away, I'm here, I'm hanging out in the woods by myself. And then to read that, it's just kind of like, oh, that's a little odd. Um, at least he is... He seemed to be settled down for the night in his weird camp spot there by the river. Um, so I feel like he's not going to come up here. <laughs> Hopefully. Later, as he lay in his tent, every crack of a branch and rustle of leaves outside felt louder. Then he heard movement at the shelter. A heavy sound, unmistakably human. He froze. The footsteps didn't come closer, but wandered near the shelter. What the hell is going on? I'm in the shelter, I'm packing up my stuff to go into my tent, and they have these things that they put in shelters a lot to hang your food bag from, so like, mice can't get to it. Look at this one. What do you know? Same handwriting as the one in the book, and that garbage on the trail from that same dude. So it says, watch out for yeet mouse. The dead do walk and talk. Like, what the hell is going on? Um, Alright, <laughs> I'm going to go into my tent now. <laughs> so I'm in my tent now. Fire's been put out. All my gear is in here. Um, I'm a little on edge. I keep watching the hill behind the shelter to see if I see a headlamp coming down there. Um, 
the hike in here, there was nobody. There's no cars along the side of that forest service road except mine. Um, it was super quiet here. I haven't heard any sign of a person at all. I hear animals up in the woods, but um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I kept my, I still have my shoes on. <laughs> I guess in case I have to run. <laughs> Man, I think this is a combination of the weird, uh, the weird dude down the trail and his cryptic writings that I keep finding everywhere, and also in the woods, the uh, your mind plays games with you. Every sound, every light is something to be concerned about. So, um, just gonna hunker down in here for a little bit and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Head over heels in fear, he packed quickly, leaving no trace, and started hiking back to his car. The trail stretched endlessly in the dark. He kept looking over his shoulder, terrified the light of a headlamp might follow. Sleeping bag. <sighs> but man, every crack and crunch I hear outside of an animal walking by, or a branch breaking, I don't know, it's just like, it's freaking me out. Um, so I'm gonna try to get some more sleep here. And um, yeah, hopefully I just kind of pass out. There's really nothing to be worried about. It's just like, <laughs> just a weird night, you know? Okay, I'm out on the trail. Um, it's the middle of the night. Uh, I was down in my tent, not asleep, kind of just like lying there staring at the tent walls, listening to all the sounds. And then I heard somebody down by the shelter. So <laughs> at first time to convince myself it wasn't what I thought I heard, uh, but it definitely was somebody down there. Um, so I didn't even wait to see or go down to see who it was, see if it was like a bunch of teenage girls or something. I don't know, I was just like, I- Finally, he reached his truck, climbed in and drove away, leaving the woods behind. The silence of the night stayed with him and he knew he wouldn't return to that part of the trail ever again. With that being said, Let's move on to our second disturbing forest encounter. On July 27th, 2022 in Bradford, West Yorkshire. The woods in Bradford had always been this camper's favorite camping spot, quiet, sheltered, and seemingly perfect. But this time, something was different. The camper arrived to find the area trashed with burnt mattresses, broken branches, and scattered rubbish. The peaceful site was no longer the haven it once was. Little did he know, this place was now covered with the secrets he was about to witness. Last time I was down here was about three months ago. So, I haven't been down since then. And obviously, get off. Ruin it for everyone, don't they? It's a right shit all. Right, I'm going to get cleaned up a bit and uh, get set up. Oh, it started raining now as well. I've half got the tent up, look. But I have brought a tarp with me as well. So I need to get this up. After cleaning up, he set up camp. The fire glowed as the night deepened, and soon disturbing sounds filled the air. It started with the snapping of twigs, distant but very loud. Then came a low growling noise, unnatural and terrifying. It echoed through the trees, sending chills down their spine. The sound wasn't of any known animal, certainly not in England.
I had all sorts planned tonight as well, but it got dark pretty quick. The noises grew louder, followed by loud splashes of water in the nearby stream. Whatever it was, it wasn't visible by the firelight. Shadows were all around the edges of the camp, just out of sight. The camper tried to brush it off by saying that it might be wind or someone playing a prank, but deep down, he knew this wasn't a trick. Something sinister was trying to disturb his peace of mind. I'll see you, morning. Hold the Once for oh, I've got a fucking rivers, haven't they? Put my boots on. A strange light appeared, hovering briefly by the hammock. It moved unnaturally, with what looked like wings and faint glowing patterns. The camper's heart froze in fear as he grabbed his knife only for defense. The growling stopped, replaced by a heavy silence. Then, a loud crash shattered the stillness, as if something huge had stepped closer.
wind or what. Am I paranoid? tricks on me. Excuse you. The camper didn't wait to see what it was. Gathering his gear in a rush, he left the site. The eerie noises following them until the valley opened into the road. Bradford's woods, once a peaceful retreat, had become a nightmare. He vowed never to return. Let's move on to our third disturbing clip. On April 9th, 2024, in a haunted forest in Quebec. The forest near Lac de in Quebec had always been surrounded by rumors of spirits. Locals claimed about whispers in the trees and shadows that seemed alive. With all curiosity and questions in his mind, he decided to explore the forest for himself, armed with his spirit box to conduct his first ever EVP session. Little did he know, he was about to regret his decision to ever come here. Keep the outdoors. And today, I bought something very special. I bought myself a spirit box. Something I've been wanting to do for a long time now, but never had the chance, or perhaps the courage. Well, what better way to test my new device into going in this haunted forest? I'm just going to start right away by turning it on. And uh, sometimes we might be lowering the volume, just listen to uh, our surroundings. But I'm mainly just going to keep this thing on. Turn it on. FM mode. We're going to have to switch the mode. AM mode. It. And these are, this is the speed of the channel where it's going to be. Okay. I'm going to start scanning right about now. Okay, let's do it. The sun had already set and it was dark all around the forest. Tall trees were bending over him, their twisted branches blocking out most of the moonlight. It was a suffocating quiet broken only by the occasional rustling of leaves, though no breeze touched his skin. Every step felt heavier, as if the forest didn't want him there. Can you repeat that? I'd be a liar if I wouldn't say I'm a little spooked right now. Is anyone here with me? stopped in a small clearing, set up his spirit box, and let it scan the airwaves. At first, there was nothing but static. Minutes passed, and the cold began to bite at him. Then, a faint voice crackled through the noise. It hurts. He was completely frozen in fear. I keep thinking I'm hearing behind you. Um, I seriously hope that's not what I'm hearing. Are you saying there's someone behind me? like that 
gives me a little bit of anxiety. Hello? You can talk to me, it's all right. I don't scare easy. You can tell me whatever you want. on this rock here and I'll just leave it be. I'm going to put a box right here. Put a box right here. You can go up to it and say anything you want. I'm going to step away from it. The session grew more intense. As he asked more questions, the responses became clearer. A chilling laugh echoed through the static and his blood ran cold. At one point, he asked for a name. The box replied sharply, Robin. The sound wasn't human. It was distorted, almost like a growl mixed with a whisper. Can you tell me your name? Can you hear that? That woman's voice. Quite a lot. Is there anything you want to tell me? What do you want to tell me? He decided he'd had enough. Packing up his equipment, he hurried back toward the trailhead, but the forest seemed to stretch endlessly. The whispers now seemed to come from all directions, and shadows danced just out of his sight. His heart raced as he finally found the edge of the forest and stumbled into the open air. I'm leaving now. Do not follow me. I repeat, do not follow me, please. this forest is. Okay, little mental break here. Later, reviewing the footage, he noticed things he hadn't picked up on during the session. Low voices murmured things he couldn't understand, and faint apparitions moved in the background. The words, it hurt and Robin were unmistakable. Okay, get a hold of yourself.
experience left him shaken. Though he had always believed in the paranormal, he had never expected to face it so directly. Whatever was out there, whatever was out there, it was better left undisturbed. With that being said, let's move on to our fourth piece of footage. On May 19, 2024, in Woodland, Newcastle, he agreed to camp overnight in a haunted woodland in Newcastle for £300, with the money going to a food bank charity. It seemed like a small price to pay for helping families in need, but as the camp started, the woods began to feel anything but charitable. But yeah, these are the old gate posts. As you can see, we've got a lot of age to them. And there's another two there. But this is the main one. And there's another one just pushing out for malt nettles and stuff in that direction. There's another bit of woodland there, but that's private woodland. I'm trying to get permission for all that in there, but it's really hard at the moment. So we need to go up here. I'm gonna show you the footpath. Then we know there's a footpath here. In case anybody talks about that on the video. So there's one footpath and then we get some more coming over here, up into that direction. And then we get one going down here as well. Now this does seem to run bang on down the side. The woodland wasn't vast, but its eerie stillness made it feel endless. Tall trees stood silent, and faint whispers of wind stirred the leaves. The spot had a reputation for strange occurrences, things that couldn't be explained away. He brushed those thoughts aside as he set up his hammock and camouflaged himself under the canopy. He reminded himself of the purpose, which was raising money for a good cause. Oh god, that scared the hell out of me. Whew, that made me jump. And there's some more here. Wow, I need to remember that's there when it gets dark. <laughs> I would have think someone's stood there watching me out. As you can see down there, the woodland. This goes on down that direction. It's not a massive piece of woodland at all, but this is where I was last time it first happened. So this is where we're going to be. I just remembered. I've been back here once or As the night deepened, the surroundings grew eerily quiet. He sat in the dim light, listening. A faint metallic jingle broke the silence, followed by the distinct crunch of footsteps on dried leaves. His pulse quickened as he scanned his surroundings. There were no cows in the field this time, and no explanation for the sound. Well, I'm actually talking like something is going to happen. <laughs> I hope something doesn't happen. Then I can easily do tonight and get the £300 and give it to that food bank charity. That would be amazing. So tonight I brought out some uh, pre-boiled water. And I've got about four cups of this to drink through the evening. Like I say, I'm just limiting out everything what people said it could have been. See, that was like the noise I heard last time. 
let's check around because this is one thing that someone said I didn't do last time. I hope you heard that as well as me. Apart from that black rub, there's no, I don't know. You can hear noise in the background, I get that in the distance. But this with that walking noise again, or a walking noise, or a bit of crunching noise, something like that. A sudden, sharp noise echoed from deeper in the woods, like branches snapping underfoot. The sound was too deliberate to be an animal. It sounded like soft murmurs in the distance. The woodland seemed to close in on him, the trees pressing closer. I don't see any cows in the field. So that was just once, okay? Last time I think it happened three times and then I bottled it. I just went home. It definitely sounded like the previous time. You know, I like jingle of metal. I had like a jingle of metal as well then. As he lay in his hammock, he couldn't shake the sensation of being watched. Shadows shifted unnaturally at the edges of his vision. He convinced himself it was his mind playing tricks until he heard the jingle again. Much closer this time face when they walk out with food when they need it so that's what I'm concentrating on in my head right now is the joy the 300 pound is going to do to the people who need it for food banks so we had a kid then let's bear that in mind so that's my concentration about this evening is how much that money will make a difference to somebody. And I'll never get the picture out of my head of that lady either. At all. So we're starting to lose daylight now. So I'm going to set my hammock up. The reason why I'm using a hammock is, if I hear anything, it's a quick, easy look over, see what's around. If I'm in a tent, I have to unzip the door. It's a little bit longer. In a hammock, it's very, very easy. Because look over, have a look around. No, fair dues. His thoughts turned to the stories locals had shared. Some said the land held spirits from battles long past. Others spoke of lingering echoes of people who had wandered into the woods and never returned. The air grew colder, biting against his skin as if unseen eyes were watching his every move. You know the, uh, the noise of the digging? Like, and then it'll stop and then it'll do it again. But I'm not sure if there's moles here. I've not seen no mole holes, but that is one possibility what could be it, that, you know, the digging of the mole under the ground. Uh, another one with trees rubbing it together. There's a lot of trees close by here, so that is a possibility. There's, there's a lot of trees. Uh, another one with birds, you know, making weird mating noises and stuff like that. Badgers. Even rats, one of them said the rat noises can make like weird sound, sounds like that. So I have looked up everything, but there's one thing I have realised is, yeah, the other thing that I've seen is, you can psychologically make yourself scared by overthinking something, and then even though... Around midnight, he heard the unmistakable sound of footsteps circling his camp. He froze his breath shallow, heart pounding in his chest. When he dared to look, there was nothing there, but the feeling of something nearby refused to fade. can hear it as well. 
if you guys heard it and I heard it when I played back then it's there if I hear it and I play it back and it's not there then yeah your mind can do that so much to think about isn't there but I do want to take my mind off it I really do I'm going to nip on to YouTube and I'm going to watch a couple of Mrs Brown boys and I'll hopefully see you in a little bit oh yeah and one other thing me and uh, Adam in the wild found an abandoned village and apparently you can camp on it I'm going by what Adam says and there's a lot of stories of ghosts and stuff there so we're planning on going to this abandoned village and spending an overnight there so if that's something you want to see please hit that subscribe button because I feel like these sort of videos people do enjoy to watch and when I'm not absolutely bricking myself I enjoy making them as well but you yeah, imagine staying in an abandoned village one night that's going to be fantastic right so everywhere is quiet and down now you can hear the birds I've heard the foxes as well there's a bit of light here I've heard no specifically what scares the hell out of me I want to get some sleep it's quarter to eleven it's amazing how time flies what happens from exhausted but relieved he packed his things and left no trace behind grateful to see the woodland fade into the rearview mirror though he raised the money for the food bank he promised himself to never camp there again some places he realized were better left alone moving on to our fifth disturbing encounter on the 11th of february 2024 in jaywick england this stealth camper settled in his van after a day of exploring the coastal town of Jaywick. It wasn't his first adventure camping in solitude, but something about this spot felt uneasy. The streets were quiet, the kind of silence that warns. He parked in what seemed like a haunting area, surrounded by the pitch-black emptiness of the night. I've seen a few boy racers doing donuts at the mini roundabout up there. That mini motorbike that was running earlier on has been firing up again. I just, I don't know, I don't know if I feel this car park or not. When I started cooking dinner, there was a few cars parked around me. There was a van over there. And now I am the only one in this car park and I wonder why. I'm gonna follow my gut instinct. I'm not parking here tonight about it and I think when you have that feeling best thing you can do is move on right okay I'll look for park for night find a lovely little spot it isn't too far from where I am right now and see if I can get me head down for the night I don't think I'm gonna be able to relax properly here as the hours crept past he began to relax enjoying a simple meal and the stillness the curtains were drawn, and the van's interior offered a small sense of safety. But at 2am, that fragile piece was shattered by footsteps crunching on the gravel outside. They were moving around the van very slowly, like a predator stalking its prey. He held his breath, listening as the handle of the door rattled. Someone was trying to get in. This is on our way back to Shrewsbury. I'll see you in the morning. Right, whoever the f that was has now gone. I'm gonna get out of here. Oh my god. His heart raced and panic surged. The next sound was a sharp crack, 
the front window exploded, scattering shards of glass across the dashboard. Outside, the intruder's shadowy figure loomed, reaching for something. A fridge covered in the front of the van. It wasn't random. They had a target. I didn't want to leave you guys on a cliffhanger before I ended that video. As you can see, I didn't uh, film a huge amount towards the end, but what happened directly after the last clip? Well, to say I was scared, you know whatless, would be an understatement. Um, I wasn't exactly concentrating on, should I film this, should I film that? So there wasn't really a lot to film afterwards. I just, quite frankly, just wanted to go home. I was really, uh, yeah, I, wa I wasn't in a good mind space. Um, after cleaning a little bit of broken glass from my driver's seat and the dashboard, you'd be surprised how far glass goes when it smashes. I've been finding little bits everywhere, but the van was in no fit state to continue camping in and uh, nor was my headspace, should we say. So I made the long journey back home. I think it was a good three, three and a half hour drive back to my house in Shrewsbury got there just before sunrise not a pleasant drive to say the least thankfully the weather was quite kind to me and it wasn't raining but you would not believe how cold it was in that front cab even with the fans on full with the heat up high it was impossible to stay warm um, but I eventually got home I was able to do a makeshift the incident left him shaken and his van damaged this was unlike any of his previous camping adventures Though hundreds of successful outings had made him feel secure, this night was a stark reminder of the dangers that can wander in isolation. Jaywick would forever be etched in his memory as the site of his worst stealth camping experience. He vowed to choose his spots more carefully, hoping never to face such terror again. With that being said, let's move on to our sixth eerie encounter. On February 14th, 2022, somewhere in the snow-covered woods, it was just past 4.30 a.m., deep in the silent, frosty woods, when a loud knock woke the camper inside his van. The sound came from near his head, deliberate and chilling in the quiet of the early morning. She froze in fear, her heart racing, unable to process who or what would be knocking at such an hour. Somebody's back here again. I hear footprints. Hello? Hello? How can I help you? I have a for you? It's 4.30 in the morning. I don't feel safe. Who are you? So... It's now 4.57, but at 4.37, so like 20 minutes ago, um, I was in a dead sleep, and I was woken from um, a knock, like right where my head is, ironically. So I was like frozen. Um, I looked at the time, and it was very strange to me, like who would be knocking on the van at 4.30 in the morning? So by the second knock, I believe it was second could be the third knock and it would knock three times every time I just mustered hello and no one a second knock followed then a third the knocking came in eerie patterns deliberate and slow the campers thoughts were confused was it someone seeking help or was it something more sinister peeking outside she caught a glimpse of a figure on a bicycle the person moved eerily, circling the van before disappearing into the shadow of the trees. Answer. The person was on a bike, like a pedal bike, like a 10-speed bike, a mountain bike or something, and they were 
up the drive. And so uh, I just came and lied back down and trying to register what the hell just happened, who was that, what did they want, what were their intentions, and all I could think about is they were probably planning on robbing um, what was ever inside the van. So I just kind of like went back to sleep or lied back down, went back to bed I should say, and uh, about 15 minutes later I hear it again, like a knock on my the, the side of my van again. How can I help you? And they say, I got a question for you. And I said, it's 4.30 in the morning. I don't feel safe. And uh, so I quietly got up and I went to the front and I peeked out and parked way up at the, on the drive. All I could see is like headlights and then they backed out oh, and went so and left. Bad. So. 15 minutes later, the knocks returned. This time they were louder, coming from the side of the van. The camper felt the suffocating grip of fear as she peeked outside again. She saw headlights in the entrance, and then the vehicle reversed and vanished into the darkness. I'm not feeling so safe, <laughs> you know? I just don't even know what to make of it. Like, what were, their, what were they thinking? I do sleep with this beside my bed, and uh, I never thought that I would have to pull it out or grab it, and I did. I hear footprints. Yeah, somebody was just here again three times now. The third time I looked out, they were walking on foot. I seen them walking and they hid behind the, the, uh, the pot, tree there. And then they went to um, a car, the same car that was here earlier. Well, that was back and then it backed away and left again three times in one night. This time, um, they didn't knock though, they were just walking around. I could hear them walking around the van. But uh, I'm not feeling so safe. Like I'm just feeling like, I don't know. So I come out this morning and you can see footprints. Look at this one, this is mine. I'll show you, there's mine. See? Right here, look, somebody spilled two of my water bottles right there. Eight liters of water gone, but I don't know why. I don't know why they were, look, see? And then over here. When dawn finally came, the camper stepped out to investigate. Footprints surrounded the van some deep in the snow where the mysterious figure had stood close enough to feel threatening. Nearby, he found spilled water bottles, eight liters of water poured into the snow for no apparent reason. These are like literally footprints. I never go there. If I, I collect my snow, I go right on this path and I cross over here and that's my spot right there. But look, they were actually there's some more. Look at that. They came here. They were standing here, as you can see. Look at the footprints, though. Look at that. That's massive. That night left him haunted, the events replaying in his mind. Every knock, every footprint, and every distant headlight felt like a message. The safety of her van had always been her safe place. Now, it felt fragile and exposed. She had to be more cautious, but deep down, she couldn't forget the lingering sense that he wasn't just being visited that night. She was being watched. Let's move on to our seventh disturbing encounter. On January 26, 2024, in the dead of night, 
the camper went deep into the snow-covered forest, determined to set up a stealth camp far off the hiking path. The ground was soaked, and distant echoes of nature added an eerie atmosphere to his trip in isolation. Way, but... Ow. Ah. Ah. Son of a... I don't think I'm going to be able to get a fire going either. I brought everything I need to start a fire, but... Oh, this looks nice up here. I brought everything I need to start a fire, but... Everything's literally soaked. This looks pretty nice up here. I think we're going to call this home for the evening. Looks pretty dry. Well, relatively. What do you know? This looks like a tent or a tarp. That kind of sketches me out. Um, so that's the remains of a tent and a tarp. That means somebody's camped back here before. Now it could have just been some young punks smoking dope. Or it could have been like an Asian Tony type character. Maybe Asian Tony himself. Uh, that kind of sketches me out. I don't like the vibe I got seeing that. That like, gives me a weird vibe. Super weird vibe. He had already started feeling the horrors of this forest. The campsite was tucked behind trees, with a tent placed in between these trees. But from the very beginning, something felt wrong. Somebody just walked by. I don't know if they had a dog or not, but they definitely didn't see me, but I could barely, barely see them. The tent does not sit high at all. I've been sitting on my Peli case. It was while I was eating, just finishing up eating. I don't know why, I'm just spooked. I haven't been saying that, but I've been spooked since I got here. I keep feeling like somebody's watching me. And then seeing that person. I know it's a public park, but still. darkest hours of the day I'm pretty much settled in everything's organized put away I'm gonna take the Peli case inside with me I don't know as the camper tried to relax an uneasy feeling grew stronger it felt like someone was watching from the shadows of the forest faint footsteps echoed in the frozen roots and whispers seemed to come from nowhere Someone was moving at the edge of his sight, and the thick fog made everything feel tighter. He was frozen in fear at this moment. I just have this strange feeling back here. Somebody else walked by. I don't think they saw me, but they were close enough to where they could see me. Even with the low light now in this fog, it's, it's kind of just like a shadow creature thing. Obviously it was a person, looked like a dude, but... Yeah, I don't like that, so it's very eerie out here. Everything's all wet. It should be nice and dry in here. Nice. Then there was a sound, a soft tap, like someone walking around the tent. The taps turned into loud, obvious sounds. Fear gripped the camper as something began pulling at the tent, trying to collapse it. There's somebody. I don't know if they could see it or not through the tent. I don't think so. I'm leaning right up against the light, but somebody's walking around out there very close to the tent. Somebody's out there. I don't know if they're coming this way or just walking around out there, I can't tell. Somebody's definitely walking around out there though. Hang on. I don't want to leave the light on in case they can see in here. I think the fly is thick enough that they can't see the light, but still, I'm leaning right up against the lantern, so you can only just barely see my face.
All right, I don't like this. Hello? Hello? They're touching my tank. Stop. They're right outside the tent. Hello, I'm in here. Hello? 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 Right, I'm getting the f out of here. Hello? Hello? I don't know what the f this is, but we're getting out of here. Hang on. Hello? Okay, they're walking away now. What do you want? What do you want? I have a knife. Where's my knife? They're with me. They're with me here. Holy crap, get away, what do you want? With his heart racing, he crawled out and tried to look at who was doing this, stumbling over roots and rocks. The fog grew heavier and heavier. He was just able to see their shadow. Each step was harder, the air colder, but finally, the camper found a path and ran towards safety. Brett, I can hear you. I hear you. All right, I don't know which way to go. How the hell do I get out of here? All right, so we, I don't know how to get out of here. All right, this is, this is How the f do I get out of here? Hang on, let me see if they're... Stay away from me! They're coming behind me. I don't know what they're doing. They could just be around. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. They're at my campsite, I see them. I see you reflecting off my tent. Leave my shit alone. All right, I'm getting out of here. You can have it. How do I, which way? Here, okay. Ah. He was soaked, scratched and trembling. What had once been a peaceful getaway now felt like a waking nightmare. The camper swore never to return to that dark, haunted place where humans following him were far more dangerous than ghosts. Ow! 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 Oh, I'm soaked. I'm soaked. Oh, God. Oh, it's the fourth time. I swear, if... If I had a firearm, I probably would have used it by now. Oh my god, my nerves are shot. Adrenaline. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh man. I hope my phone isn't drenched. My phone is soaked. My phone is soaked. I can't run anymore. I'm close. Got it. Ow. Ow. My ankle and my knee. With this disturbing encounter coming to an end, let's move on to our eighth piece of footage. On June 14th, 2016, a camping trip turned into a nightmare. The annual bro camping adventure began like any other. Friends adventuring with gear, laughter, and plans for a fun weekend in the woods. They picked a spot near a state park, deep in the wilderness. Despite initial setbacks with a closed campground, they found a secluded area after a long search. It was perfectly quiet, surrounded by trees, and far from civilization. Oh, come on. Good morning, morning everybody. everybody! Welcome okay. back to the vlog! It's the day you've all been waiting for. It's the bro, the annual bro camping trip. We're here with Austin, Andrew, Aaron, Jesh, Colton, Laris, and we're meeting Jacob. Big Jakes. Big Jakes is coming along, so we gotta drive to uh, the campsite, which is about two hours away, and get this adventure going. Oh, groceries time. Bananas. Bananas. Very good. Five is good. 
That's all I bought right there. That's all I bought yeah. right there. Because the research on the Yeah, that's why. Literally the longest receipt on earth. Three items you said? Thirteen items. It takes up from right here to here. That's all it is. And then I got all this. Extra notes. <laughs> Andrew stopped me to get gas. Not sure what this man is doing. Who is that? I don't know. He looks lost. We should ask him what's going on. Can we help you, sir? Yes. Andy's car is broken. Oh. No well, gas is going in the tank. Are you serious? Yeah. Why? I don't know. It, it just keeps like backflowing. What? I don't know. Uh oh. I don't know exactly what. As the group set up camp, everything seemed normal. Tents were pitched, a fire was started, and the air was filled with the smell of bison burgers cooking. They joked, explored, and even flew a drone over the tree. It was just another carefree camping trip. Already got a fire pit, so it's perfect. Sunscreen. Oh. Look at that, the tent's up. Yeah, Andrew and Jess just put the tent up. Cool. Colt and Aaron and I have actually been getting lots of wood and setting up the fire pit. Andrew's getting the canopy ready. And we're just... Justin has been doing nothing but filming, so. I, this is the first it's time I got the camera Here out. Here you go. Here you go. I just. <laughs> Jacob, being Jacob, didn't bring any food with him because he thought or underwear. or underwear or other clothes to change him <laughs> for reasons I don't know why. But uh, Austin, Laris, and Jacob left to go into town to get some food. They're going to be back probably in like two hours. Food I mean, and undies. I mean, the closest town is an hour away, right, Josh? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So look, the whole camp's going to be set up perfectly for dinner when they get back. Yep. Basically. He bring underwear, though. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> he said he worked. Straight Morning. up till they came, so there's no way you could have underwear with them. <laughs> this is definitely a four-person job in the room, though. This is taking about how long now? Okay. Ready? Let's go. We flew the drone way over there to some other campers. We're doing a little spying. Here we are. <laughs> so fun. But as night fell, the forest changed. The atmosphere felt eerie, and the friendly rustling of leaves became something darker. The group began to hear strange sounds, sticks breaking, faint knocking, and what sounded like something heavy moving through the trees. They dismissed it at first, laughing it off as animals or the wind. Fire. What was that sound? I don't know. <laughs> I think there's a Bigfoot here. Whoa. As you guys know, every camping trip, you, we usually play oh. night crawlers, where people go wandering off into the woods without anyone else noticing, and then make sounds, throw sticks. Like, try to attack. <laughs> try to attack the base. Did you guys hear that? I heard it. What was that? Let's go, let's go take a look. Oh, it's probably super dark, you can't see me, but that's okay. They're out here, guys. Laris and I are trying to find them. I see something moving out there though. The light is blinding me. That's Austin. What is it? <laughs> oh, it is Austin. <laughs> Scary out here in the woods all by yourself. Whoa. Nothing. Huh? Do you not see me? I thought I saw something over there, but then you didn't move. <laughs> Wow, look at the moon. <laughs> then came the growling, a low, unnatural sound that echoed through the woods. It reminded one of them of something from a horror movie. The noise didn't stop. It grew louder, as if something wanted them to hear. It's cool. All right, I'm in night mode. They're up here somewhere. I'm gonna find these guys in the woods. I think I hear something up here. It's just a tree. I don't know where they are. They gotta be around here somewhere. Ow. 
What's that sound? What the crap? There's something up here. I've traced the sound to this part of the forest where I think there might be something. What? What was that? Whoa! Take your bastard! Ow, just burn, get rid of me! Oh, let me go, you idiot! Ow! By now, the group felt uneasy, but they stayed close to the fire, trying to focus on their food and gossip. However, the sound seemed to circle them, moving from one side of the campsite to the other. When a loud thud came from just beyond the tree line, one of the campers grabbed a flashlight and aimed it into the darkness. The beam revealed nothing but dense trees. By dawn, they packed up in a hurry, leaving behind a trip they would never forget. Hey, fellas. Hey, oh, got you. Vlog camera. No, I did it. Justin was looking all over that. He started crying. I know. Where was that? <laughs> it was just a, it was on my car, car console. Oh, oh. Well, I'm glad you guys finally came to bed. What are you guys doing? Ow! <laughs> In here. Ah! Go for the zipper, Jake, you freak. Jake, you have to put your food away. Yeah, you guys have you to guys back have out. To stuff. We, we crawled out all the way from the bank all the way to the campfire, and you guys didn't see us. What? You yep. were at camp when you guys... I wanted to look, but these buff What was supposed to be a weekend of fun turned into a night filled with fear, leaving them with a haunting question. What was out there in the woods? And why did it feel like it wanted them gone? With this question still tingling in our minds, let's move on to our next footage. On December 15th, 2009, this boy and his friends were camping at Golden Ears, expecting nothing more than a peaceful night under the stars. A fun camping adventure for all your friends sounds very entertaining, right? But things were about to take a horrifying turn. Cam recording as of now. Justin beer can, so he was drinking. But those are ours. No, they're not. <laughs> Bud Light Lager. The other one didn't look like ours. You know, all of our videos are just going to look like a Blair Witch Project. I guess I'm the only one that's seen it. <laughs> I think it's seen. Liz, this was not the way we took. Did we go, oh, we went through this, like... Liz, I don't want to do this. No, we went through here. We went through the ground. Wait, wait, we're the underwear. What? The underwear. We haven't reached it yet. Okay. I didn't know if we were... Wait, have we reached it yet? I don't even know. This is the fire, so we already passed the underwear. Let's keep going. Okay. So this <laughs> is the fire that had the candle inside. Or there's the candle. Let's give a shot of that, Nikki. Nikki? The fire that had the candle inside. That's the candle. Oh, I see the candle. Yeah, see? It's yeah. those like tea light things. As they explored the beach, they stumbled upon strange, weird things. A candle burning inside a makeshift fire pit a noose hanging from a nearby tree, and an old pillow left on a log. There's no reason why these things should be placed here, but the scariest part was yet to come. This all okay? I'm sure you'll be able to... There it is. Okay, I got the candle. Yeah, no, no one's going to sneak up on us. We're in a dark, secluded area of the woods with only flashlights and beer. We're fine. Sure. And no good. one knows where we are. Yeah, we're fine. We're not be very good at no, no, Craig and Colin know where we are. Yeah, we'll be fine. I'm expecting a cliff. Thank you. Holy fuck, the stream oh, is going now. I mean, what a bottle. Bottle. Wait, was this the string up there? The wacky string was up there. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's over there. Yeah. Oh, I never went over there. Well, there's wacky string up there. We should... Okay, well, let's just go to the pillow and the noose. You guys know I'm going to go home. Let's go home. Whoa. The homeless guy grabbed me for a second. No, come with us. You've got the light. You have yeah. to come with us. No, go back Come around. That's true. The person waiting alone never has a good time. They get their close up and death scene.
You know how awesome that would be if he's actually there? Ow! Your nails have to go away right now. With the pillow on it. Did you guys find the pillow? The pillow's on the log up here. Right there, see? Nikki, the sunglasses are gone. No. Okay, there they are. Okay, good. Oh, there's, that pillow. There's the pillow, guys. Oh, wait, the news. Wait, what about the... the most chilling discovery was a grave site that hadn't been there earlier in the day. A tombstone with an inscription. The final gift sent shivers down through this group of friends. It seemed someone's ashes had been scattered nearby. <laughs> what? The small news. <laughs> the small of a news. <laughs> so good. <laughs> we have Fruit Loops. Really? You didn't eat them? I didn't touch them because you called them before we bought them. What is that? Oh my god, what is that? Is that a sign? <laughs> For Mom, 1929 to 1974. We love you. We love you. Love you. <laughs> oh my god, wait a second, another one! One final gift. <laughs> Scatter me not. To release. To release <laughs> something. My ashes. My ashes to the, to the sky. Sky. Remember, Remember now, now those years. years gone. Gone. Pro when, it's probably by. When. In the gifts I gave to you. Remember, Remember now the happy times, something family ties we shared. Don't something my resting. As the night deepened, an eerie sense of being watched crept over them. They heard branches snapping in the darkness, and every rustle made them jump. Voices were echoing in the forest, but no one was there. <laughs> you see? Okay. Hey, don't go too fast. You guys have the flashlights. Well, you guys have the flashlights. Yeah, I recorded all that crazy stuff. All you can really hear is voices. I think I heard something in the forest. No, you did not. <laughs> Sound like breaking branches. You did hear nothing. <laughs> If I was alone right now, I'd probably be shitting myself, <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> I didn't see that before. I don't know, and I, when I said I thought it was a sign, I was kidding. I meant it was just a piece of metal, and then you actually said there was a death date on it. You're like screaming. Oh, that's our music. Don't run, but you have the flashlights, you guys. You can see the car. I think this whole video has to go on faith. Was this just an evil prank played by the boys on the girl just to scare them? Someone was out there, disturbed by their presence. They knew they shouldn't have touched the grave, and now, whatever had been laid to rest wasn't going to let them leave. That's from 1974. Hey, isn't that 15 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I thought maybe that meant significantly to somebody who now freaked him out. <laughs> hey, do you think the squatter was really the dead guy? And the pillow's been there for 15 years? <laughs> I didn't know it was there ashes, 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 but I sat down. I just wanted to read. Liz, Liz, Liz. Turn around. What? Just to make sure. 
there's no ash on you. There's no ashes on me. It's 15 years old. They've Liz, all like blown away. Liz, if there's a ghost, it never blows away. No, they've moved. They moved over to the pillow. Oh my god. And that was the tale. The girls were scared, but the mystery of the grave remains. With that being said, let's move on to our last disturbing forest encounter. On July 6, 2017, two young boys were setting off firecrackers in the forest while camping. They thought it was one of the most exciting nights ever. The sound of fireworks echoed throughout the forest, creating a lively atmosphere, but soon the fun turned into a terrible nightmare as things took a frightening turn. Good. Yeah, it's in law. Happy fourth. Happy fourth indeed. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Are you an idiot? Watch out. That's pretty I cool, man. I wanted it to go up in the air, man. It's still cool. They heard something from the forest and made the regrettable decision to look for where that noise was coming from. What do you think it is? Come back. We just get the hell out of here. I'm not getting near that. I'm not getting near that. Dude, we gotta get the hell out of here. No. These two friends kept walking deep in the forest, not knowing what was waiting for them. They didn't realize that they might witness something paranormal in there. They were scared, but still kept walking. Run. We get the hell out of here. Oh yeah, get it. Uh-uh. We need to get the car. Go get it. Get the, we need to get the injured. car. No, go see if it's injured. We need to get the car. Dude, this is snap gold. Go get it. Yeah, man, you got the phone. Is it still there? Uh-uh. 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 Go! No! Run! Run! Oh. Oh. We gotta take the car! What the fuck? Yo, what the hell? What the hell? When they finally realized that they might be in danger, they ran for their lives, but still encountered an eerie creature with abnormal limbs running towards them. Did they wake it up from the noises they made? Was it angry with them? What the fuck? What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> this paranormal creature was even throwing something at them. What a horrible night indeed. These terrifying encounters remind us that the wilderness can hide far more than just wildlife. Whether it's strange noises, 
unsettling sightings, or the feeling of being watched. These campers all learned that some places are better left unexplored. Always stay cautious, because the unknown in the forest might be wandering just beyond our sight. For more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like this video. Comment below which case you find the most horrifying. Don't forget to press the bell icon for future notifications.